Welcome back to Sister of Circle Live. <laughs> Our next guest has one of the hottest songs of the 90s, and we are still singing this song on today. Mm -hmm. His mega hit, This Is How We Do It, Boom. has definitely stood the test of time. Mm -hmm. And he is here to show us how he is still doing it. Please welcome the multi-platinum artist, Montel Jordan. Yay! Yay! Hey, hey. Yes, it's our little room. What's up? What's Big up? room. Settle down, down on the purple pillow. Welcome to the circle. Careful, you're down to the circle. Yeah. I tell you, shut. Don't do it. <laughs> what? I'm, I'm this cap of foolishness. Oh, and I'm in these rainbows. No, boats. it's just love. It's just love. It is. It's all love. We love the campus. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Good morning. Well, Montel, I know people ask you this all the time. Mm. How, how tall are you, really? Like, give us the real number. Six feet eight inches tall. What? Six feet yeah. eight inches Six, eight. long. How you swing that in the music business? Hey, uh, it's it's worked. Yeah, it set me apart from from all I the know other that's recording right, artists. They're yeah. shrimps. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no shade, no shade, but shade. <laughs> shade mm -hmm. so, so obviously we've been teasing. This is how we do it. Yeah, is yeah. it still? It, does it still surprise you how relevant and how popular the song still is after all these years? You know, it's it's a blessing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, real talk. You never know that something like that is going to stand the test of time like that. I think recently it was like voted like one of the top of the top. 100 songs of mm. the last century. Yeah. Wow. It's like wow. in there. Yeah. So uh, that's mm. not a bad number to be nah. in. You know? It's yeah. still a turn up, no yeah. matter where you're at. It really yeah. is. Right, yeah. right. Well, you know, give us some background on you. Where are you from and where are your musical roots from? Yeah, yeah. I'm born and raised in South Central Los Angeles, California. I'm an LA kid. I lived out there for the first 30 years of my life. Uh, and just from that standpoint, I was just a West Coast uh, guy growing up. Uh, my whole music inspirations were really taken from um, Stevie Wonder and mm -hmm. uh, Donny Hathaway, uh, even uh, uh, Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis, what they were doing in the sound of Mili Minneapolis. I always wanted to be in a music group. Mm -hmm. uh, hip hop was big for me, so everything from NWA, uh, because I was on the West Coast, mm -hmm. up to Slick Rick the Ruler, wow. who for me yes. was my New York inspiration. And that's kind of where those things just kind of collided and met, that mm -hmm. hip hop and R&B just kind of during that time in the 90s as I was coming up, I was trying to uh, put those two things together. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But you went to Pepperdine. Law yeah. school. Yes, well, so, no, yeah, you I wanted went, to go to law school. I was going to go to law school. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, very good friends with the, the uh, president of the law school out there, and that was my, that was my plan A. Plan A was get your uh, degree, undergrad degree in communications, minored in business, and then law school was going to be the next step. Uh, but then I just uh, felt like, well, if I'm going to try for the music thing, it needs to happen now. Maybe law school can happen anytime, but mm -hmm. the music business window is, is mm -hmm. short. Yeah. And it's interesting that you talk about Rick the Ruler being like an influence because you were the first R and B artist on Def Jam. Wow. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. there were all when it was all hip hop. Hip -hop. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what was what was that like? You know, because you still came out actually you had a little piece of hip hop mm -hmm. to it. So mm -hmm. what was your intentionality when you created your music being in that type of environment? Mm -hmm. Russell Simmons signed me as his uh, I think he called me his documentary singer. So I right. became like his uh, his his R&B version of rap. And so right. I was just basically singing what the rappers were, were rapping. Yeah. Uh, and from that standpoint, it was my way to honestly uh, kind of uh, distance myself from the other artists that were out there, mm -hmm. the Guy and R. Mm -hmm. Kelly, all of those other artists, by me doing more of a hip hop uh, fashion style, it kind of separated me from the others. Right. And it was tough though, yeah, because sure. it meant the persona had to change. Like I smile a lot. Right. You know, on Def Jam, there was no smiling. Right. Right. It was like, yo, it was everything was. How you gonna be thugged out in love? Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, you can't do that. You don't you know? know which one to be. But how yeah. do you think that has changed music, you know, in general? I mean, well, actually, we have a lot of hip hop going right now. Like that's kind of the sure. forefront. But R and B was kind of the forefront in the nineties. Mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah. how do you think that music has changed with the emergence of hip hop the mm -hmm. way it has the way it has come up? Well, I think definitely music has changed because you have more rapping and singing included, right. uh, whereas you would have features on records. Uh -huh. You have that a little bit now, but more you have the rappers that'll sing on their own records and singers that'll rap on their own records. Right. And then probably the other difference is that um, a lot of times the, the artistry, uh, back then people uh, signed up for artists. We, we subscribe to the to artists. The artists. Mm -hmm. yes. Now we sign up to the songs. Yes. So, so if you, you like a song, you in. If you don't like the song, I don't care. But for me back then, I didn't care if Prince had a hit record or not, I was buying his album. Right. If Sade had a hit record or not, I didn't care Buy I was buying his album because I was invested in the artist. Right. Come on. Yes. That is so important. 
important. It really yeah. is. Yes. It really yes. is. Yes. And people have gotten away from that. Um, you stepped away from music for a while. Mm -hmm. um, why did you do that? I saw your unsung, and it was compelling. Mm -hmm. yeah, my God, you. my God. Uh, what was the decision to step away? Uh, counterfeit life. Mm. Uh, and that simply means that a lot of what, I think somebody said hallelujah in the uh, audience. Yes. Somewhere. <laughs> uh, no, it was, it was counterfeit life that all the things, the material possessions, the fame, all those different things, they were counterfeit because uh, I always wanted more and more and more. And that's how you can tell when something is counterfeit. Mm. Uh, if you get something and you achieve it, you get a, you know, you get a number one record and then it's, oh, well, what's next? Then you find yourself kind of searching for something that's counterfeit. And uh, that was my journey to start looking at, okay, do I want to continue doing this cycle of getting things and achieving things that are, are not going to satisfy me, or do I want something bigger and greater? Wow, wow. wow. Talk to us quickly about the, the Streamy Awards. They're like the Oscars yeah. of the web. Right. Yeah. Yo, eight year Streamy Awards is airing on Monday night, October the 22nd, mm -hmm. uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. on the West Coast. Uh, it is uh, a fantastic show, and it's the online award show for all the stuff that's on YouTube, and it's streaming there on YouTube.com. And you can catch Montel's upcoming performance at the 2018 Streaming Awards again, yes. October 22nd, on YouTube. And if you're again, right. yes, and if you're staying with us for the full hour, we'll have more of Montel, and the conversation always continues at Sister Circle TV on all social media platforms. Montel Jordan, everybody. Booyah! How are you? <laughs> Thanks for being with us. Uh, we are back with a very tall and handsome Montel yes. Jordan. Amen. Very tall and handsome. Yes. <laughs> welcome back. Yes, uh, welcome you. back. You know what? Um, b before the break, we were talking about your music, mm -hmm. but let's talk about your answer to another calling. Yes, mm. God. Let's talk about your music ministry. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I've, I've got a great opportunity not just to have done music, uh, but uh, I felt like I've known I was supposed to be in ministry uh, my whole life from the time I was four or five years old. And so uh, I took the journey from doing music into full-time ministry. I'm actually mm -hmm. an executive pastor at a church in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be seeing you up in there. So, okay. <laughs> okay. Praise so, on the Lord, praise on the Lord. No. Yes. <laughs> yes. But yeah, and uh, I've been doing that uh, since 2011. I'm an executive pastor at Victory World Church, Norcross, Georgia, where I get to do Norcross. worship music. Yeah. yeah. I do That's worship close music. To me. Mm. Well, what's up then? I've been looking for it. It's a great church. I'm at the Hamilton Mill campus. campus. Hamilton Mill Three location. We got a come. Midtown location. Uh, and I get to do men's ministry. I get to do a marriage ministry alongside my wife, Kristen. And we also uh, get to do the worship ministry. My and it's been, been fantastic. I'm going to have to come visit your church. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. You will love it. Now, You'll love it. I know that a lot of times mm. R&B artists will merge into gospel music and they'll mm. do gospel albums. Uh, for me personally, I just feel like spiritually I wasn't solid enough mm. to, to do that because I want to be true mm. when mm. I do yeah, it. I want to yeah. be mm -hmm. honest. What, what has been your struggle? Has, or if there mm. has, has there been a struggle between you doing R&B music or mm. like an R&B album or a gospel album? And are you going to do new music? Those are great questions. <laughs> so, let me start by saying this. The, the challenge is, uh, do, did I love the gift of music more than I love the gift giver? Mm. Okay, so for me, that's the journey that I had, mm. to, that I had to take, that was, was to understand that I, I made music my God for a while. Mm. If I need provision, yes. yeah. I go out and I, I use my God to try and get that, that money and do what I need to do to provide right. for my family. Mm -hmm. When I realize I'm not the provider, God is the provider. That's right. uh, the that's gift right. is from Him. Uh, and then I, I let the gift go. Uh, for a while and then allowed God to use me for ministry. Then he says, well, now I can trust you with the gift again. Uh -huh. So now uh -huh. to answer the other question, once I answered the call to ministry, when I said yes to Jesus and I took that route, he says, okay, you can have the gift now to use the influence through the world. So I take what I have in the sacred world and I can use it for the secular world. Mm -hmm. I don't just use my gift of music just for the church. <laughs> you know, that's, that's like trying to, you know, uh, having a hospital, you know what I'm saying, for just mm -hmm. uh, people who are well, what? you know. Right. So I go out into the world and I get a cool opportunity to minister to people outside the four walls of the church to right. be Jesus out in the you world. You said right. a hospital just for people who are well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That would be, yeah. How can you get to them if you can't yes. get to them? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. funny yeah. because my daughter knew Montel Jordan the, uh, the, the, yeah. the the newer Montel right. Jordan, yeah, the gospel, yeah. and she's like, mm -hmm. you know Montel Jordan? I was like, uh, yeah. yeah. yeah right, but <laughs> but, you, but yeah. because you've been able to cross genres like right. that yeah. and have and gain an entirely different audience, yeah. that's just truly a blessing. And yes. the, only, the only change is back then, musically, I was having them exalt me. Like I was, I want mm. you to put your hands up for me. 
You know what I mean? And so now the difference is because I recognize that where that gift comes from, yeah, I want you to put your hands up, but it's not for me anymore. It's for something that's more lasting and something more relevant. Right. So. Well, you know, we all love the Lord. Yes, we do. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we want to play a game, though. Uh-oh. Okay, come on. We want to play a game based on your secular song. This is how we do it. <laughs> okay, well, let's do it then. All right. We can still, right. we can still get the Holy Ghost from it. Right. Okay, now, come this on. game is called This Is How We Do It, Married Edition. Yes. Married Edition. Yeah, because Married we talked edition. about your wife. You all do yeah. things together. Yeah, we do. So we thought yes. we'd, you know, yes. do something nice. Yes. So okay. you, you're going to take this pattern. It's a okay. nice Montel. It's a mm -hmm. happy Montel. Yeah. yeah. And then a... Uh, not so, Not happy, so happy Monday. Monday. So okay. if this is how we do it yeah. right here. Okay. What we're going to do this is, is how we and do this it. is how we don't how we do it. Do it. Yes. So okay. we're going to give you like Scenario. scenarios okay. and then you're going to say this, this is how we do it and this is how, this is how we don't do it. This is how you don't do it. Okay. Right. Right. The first one is uh -huh. going down to the gym with your wife. Oh, okay, you're doing it. Right. Okay, doing. good. Yeah. Okay, and my next. Look at me. It came. Oh, there we go. Getting marriage advice from your friends. I know that's ah. all. Okay. All right. What about sticking to your guns after an argument is already over? Mm. Okay. Oh, so we, so we don't, don't do, do it. it. Right. Mm. Okay. Okay. Nah. okay, how about? You got to prefer them. Mm. I got to prefer them. See, this is so much knowledge. The jewels is just. How about um, going through your spouse's phone? Wow, you now, do. Let me qualify that. Qualify it. Yes. I don't have to do it, mm -hmm. but I don't have passwords. I don't have code. I don't have nothing. My wife has full access to my stuff. I got full access to her stuff, and that way we ain't never got no issues. Yeah. Okay. Okay, nothing to hide. What about uh, a separate bank accounts? No. Absolutely not. That's going in. That's going into marriage with an exit strategy rather than having an eternal strategy. Ooh. Okay. We, okay. we all in. Okay. Did you, okay. I mean, you just dropping gems just, like just little gems. We okay. all in. Just throwing them at him. What about going to bed mad? Yeah. This is not the out. face you want going to bed mad. Yeah. Exactly. This all is the right. face you want going to bed. Yes, God. Yeah. I love Bitter, it. Bitterness sets in overnight and it's like a crock pot and it cooks overnight. By the time you wake up in the morning, you're more angry than before you went to bed. Wow. Okay. Look at this, man. Montel, well, he does let me do the marriage ministry down to the Norcross Down church. to the book. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All of it. Us yeah. and this down. But we're happy to have you down to the circle. <laughs> thank you. I'm glad Montel you were. Jordan. For, uh, thank you so much again for being with us. Uh, check out his upcoming performance at the 2018 Streaming <laughs> Awards on October the 22nd on YouTube.